Have you ever seen a Fender Elite Stratocaster from the 80s? Do you want to? Of course you do, you're here. Let's check this thing out. There it is. Look at this guy. Ah, oh, it's different. This is a friend's guitar. They dropped it off here, hoping that I would fix it up for them so that they could play it once again. It's a little bit rough. It needs some help here and there. It needs some fresh strings and a setup. So I'm gonna do my very best so that they can pick it up tomorrow at my son's birthday party and get back to playing it because it deserves to be played. It wants to be played. Look at this thing. So what do we have here? This is an early 80s Strat, like I said, an elite model. The first thing you'll notice is that the knobs have rubber grips on them. That's so your hand won't slip off willy-nilly while you're trying to adjust your volume and tone controls. Also, it's got push button pickup selectors. Wild, that's so you can select the bridge and the neck together if you want, or all three pickups together if you want. You might've noticed that the pickups are covered. They are active pickups. You can see there's a little cover back here. I'm assuming the battery is hiding there. I really hope it's not hiding under the pick guard because that would be pretty poor design. Bad design if Fender did that. But looking at the size of that, I have a feeling that is where the battery is living. You might have noticed it doesn't have an output jack. You're wrong, it does. It's right there on the edge. The bridge is a unique design. Fender didn't use these for very long. Uh, uh, Steve has a Strat that I think originally came with one of these bridges and before he bought it, someone swapped it out and he's been searching for one of these. <laughs> ever since, but we'll get like close-up shots of that so you can see exactly what's going on. Even the, the wiggle stick, let me pull it out, has a unique design where it has little posts on the side that slip in to the little collette there that holds it. They rethought so much for these guitars. They were trying to reinvent the wheel here. Even the tuners are different. They honestly have like this hand machined thing going on where you can see the tooling on the sides that they chromed over. I, I've never seen tuners like this on anything else. Not that I have a ton of experience with 80s fenders. Like there's a lot of 80s fenders that I've never tried because I was a child when they came out. And by the time I was playing guitar in the 90s, they were all relegated to pawn shops and things like that. And I could only get out to pawn shops so often, but yeah, super cool guitar. They fetch money on the used market now, up in the 2000s, around there, sometimes less, sometimes more. But yeah, let's plug it in and see what it sounds like as is, see what the issues are, and then I'll take it apart and start working on it. That's unique. <laughs> That's probably one of the things that they wanted me to address and figure out. I have a feeling a little bit of deoxid in that pot might help that. Hopefully I'm not gonna be replacing a pot today. I'm having a suspicion that because it's active, there's gonna be circuitry in there that I'm not prepared to deal with. So hopefully I'm able to address that. <laughs> The trim's pretty firm. I'll probably lighten that up a little bit. Feels smooth though. It takes some elbow grease to get it moving. I'm wondering if it just needs a fresh battery. I'm hearing a little bit of a staticky hum to it. It might just be the nature of the pickups. I don't know. Here it is in the number two position. They are singles. There is a noise canceling happening when I turn on that middle. It's, it's very quiet. You guys probably won't be able to hear it. Middle. Number four. It has 
has a unique sound. Like it's it's in the direction of Stratty without actually being Stratty. I, what do you guys think? Here is the neck pickup. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. This sounds like a Strat neck pickup, but different somehow. All right, I'm ready. I want to take this thing apart. I want to address that issue, whatever it is, if I can. Uh, it probably doesn't need much of a setup. Check the intonation real quick. I might give it a little tweak here and there. But changing the strings might address that as well. All right, I'm gonna turn on the air conditioner because it's hot in here and start taking this thing apart. Really interesting top loading setup for this trim. The balls just pop right in there. Let's take a look under this pickguard. I want to see the guts. As you can see, the pickups themselves are mounted direct into the body, Jaguar style. It would actually be kind of fun to track down these pickups and throw them in a Jaguar. They're probably compatible. Oh my gosh. Oh, we got a circuit board in here. Am I going to be able to pull this thing out? Oh boy, there's a lot going on in there. <laughs> I'm not prepared for that. Jeez. Okay. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to pull out. There's a dummy coil in there. Interesting. I'm coming into this not knowing nearly enough to be working on this guitar. <laughs> this is this is a bit of a trip. Holy hell. I think the uh, the cables are too short going to the output jack for me to pull this whole thing off here. Let me take a look to see if there's like a clip system or something. Nope. Oh my gosh, we got double pots. They really over-engineered this. This is ridiculous. It's a good thing those push buttons still work because replacing those would have been nearly impossible here. Holy hell. Well, am I gonna even be able to get to that volume pot to spray deoxy in it? Yeah, I think I've got a shot. Here we go. I should plug it in to make sure I'm addressing the issue. There we go. You gotta love this stuff. Might as well do the other pots while I'm here. Hearing that crackling disappearing right away. Yeah. There we go. Mwah. I'll have a link in the description. I use this stuff all around the house all the time, fixing light switches, switches on microwaves and toaster ovens and stuff like that. It just does it. It does the trick. I'm wondering if I should, uh, I should give this thing a little bit of a clean around the edges in there. Yeah, I think I will. There's all kinds of grit and grime that's accumulated on the edges of everything just 
you know, sitting in the air, just breathing in the air that surrounded it for 40 years. So I'm going to use... So I'm going to use my Diderio cleaning kit stuff here. I'm running out of this. I should probably order a fresh one. I could, I should just be able to order the bottles, right? I don't need to order the whole folder, do I? But yeah, let's give this guitar a deep clean and then I'll change the battery and string it up and give it a little bit of a setup. <laughs> So you might have noticed there's no back plate on here for the trim. And I'm sitting here scratching my head trying to figure out how I'm supposed to adjust the tension on the trim springs. They're all hidden behind these pickups and that dummy coil there. I am, I am not going to take this whole thing apart to figure that stuff out. There is an adjustment screw right here. I am hoping and praying that there's some sort of clever mechanism in here that will allow me to adjust the tension of this trim because yeah, I am not dealing with that nonsense in there. Like that's on another level. That's like, you know, this thing might as well have a transmission in it. <laughs> what was Fender trying to do here? Oh man. <laughs> so I'm going to button it back up now and then I'll, I'll mess with that when I get strings on it. We'll see what that does. I don't know. I'm maybe I'm going to ruin something here. I hope not because I'm not going to fix it. I'm not going to take this thing apart to fix whatever that nonsense is in there. By the way, it's got that dummy coil in there. If you don't know about dummy coils, it's a coil that's not close enough to the strings to uh, pick up the strings but uh, it provides you with hum canceling against the other pickups, which is, I'm assuming, why it's there. But I, st I still heard a little bit of hum from each individual pickup that went away when I combined like neck and bridge, I mean neck and middle and bridge and middle. What a strange guitar. Fender was really really trying to do something with this one. It's strung up real nice and easy. This top loading bridge, it's a solid design as far as loading the strings into it, as far as adjusting the looseness of the springs. It's like I get more fluttery with this. I don't know. I'm about to find out. I'm going to find out if I can truly adjust it with that little hole that's right there. Let's see if an Allen key will fit in there. Oh my gosh, I got the right one on the first try. That never happens. So I don't know what I'm about to do here. Is this going to screw stuff up? Am I going to hate myself after this? I'll give it a, a half turn to the left. Maybe it feels a little looser. Another half turn. Oops. I'm not sure there's any difference being made now. I, I'm like three or four turns, complete turns into adjusting it, and it still feels pretty firm. 
It does feel a little looser now, but it's a, a very subtle adjustment. I'd really have to spend some time dialing this in to get what I want out of it. And hopefully not having to get into the guts because, oh my gosh, it's a mess in there. This guitar has got more internal components than most tube amps. I definitely don't want to be messing around in there. But yeah, I this trim's a little bit of a mystery to me as far as how to adjust it. I don't know what I was just adjusting with that Allen key. It feels like it's maybe a little bit looser, but there's not a lot of room left to back it out. So I don't know. Maybe this thing wa wants heavier strings to get more looseness. <laughs> I put nines on it, by the way. String Joy signature nines. Nine to 42s. Man, it dives. It goes floppy on you. I kind of doubt my friend's even gonna use the wiggle stick. So I'm honestly not gonna worry about it all that much. Let's give it a fresh tune and play around with it a bit. I'm still hearing like a staticky sound. I want to throw a fresh nine volt in there just to do it. We're here, might as well. There's only two screws in the way and I have some nine volts sitting on my desk. Flat tipped screws here. Does that mean that Yeah, there's there's metal screw holes here. They Fender had something to prove with this guy. They they were trying to do something. They were trying to offer some sort of premium experience here. So I'm swapping an energizer for an energizer. I don't actually know which is newest. This doesn't look old. They might have put a brand new battery in here before dropping it off. That's so wild though. They went to the, the effort to have metal into metal screws for this back plate here. I guess they knew that you were going to be going in and out of here pretty often over the lifetime of the guitar. And so they didn't want to have wood screws stripping out over time. Interesting. That noise is still there on the individual pickups. It must just be some 60 cycle hum. The name of the channel. <laughs> From these unusual 40 year old active pickups. I'm gonna push that thing out of the way. It's too tempting and it's too hard to use right now. a bit more sparkle to it now. hi-fi sound with all the pickups on.
There's a little bit of like a clicky noise coming with the push buttons, but I gotta say, kind of don't hate it. Like it's really fast and convenient. I wonder, like, I don't think this guitar has gotten 40 years of playing to it. It's, it's mostly a, a case baby for the most part. Like it has seen stages. I've seen this played live, but I wonder if with serious, heavy, heavy, every day sessioning and gigging use, if this switch system would go bad eventually. There is something very satisfying about it though. It's very quick and easy to do whatever you want. selection Big surprise, I just changed the strings. No big deal. Let's throw some overdrive at it. I've got the Wampler Bell on the floor. with the JHS, what was it called again? The hard drive. And I'll throw some delay on top of it. Do the 80s thing.
time to tune again. And then I want to explore the tone controls. I haven't messed with those at all. Maybe there's some secrets hiding within, or maybe it's just standard tone controls. Although that one had a double pot on it. So yeah, it's gotta be different. I'm gonna give the nut on this guitar some lube before I give it back. Like I said, I don't think my friend's gonna use the wiggle stick, but might as well. I think the strings are sticking in the nut a little bit, leading to tuning instability. Also, I've noticed the neck has a bit of an unusual shape to it. It's almost like a soft V up by the nut. And then it like, it transitions into a pretty standard C shape at the heel. That's interesting. It's got a little bit of an angular thing going on up by the nut. Very interesting. All right, tone controls. What are we dealing with here? <laughs> Let's test the tone controls in the neck position for now. What does this middle one do? That double pot. Did I not have it turned all the way up? Oh, <laughs> it has a center position with a decent little click to it. So I thought I had it turned all the way up. It's been in the middle position this whole time. There's the middle position. More sparkle. What is this thing? Some sort of active tone control. Here it is all the way down. In the middle. All the way up. There we go. sparkle to it now. Interesting. Is that for all the pickups? Sure seems like it. What does the other tone control do? Is it gonna be some sort of like Is that just a standard passive tone control? No. It's doing something else. Oh, it gets brighter when you roll it back. It's a low cut. <laughs> Happens when I do this. Turning it all the way up gets you some beef on the signal too. tricks going on here. They threw a lot at this guitar. That's wild. I want to try that with the overdrive. Now 
portion. quite as obvious what's going on there when you're completely destroying the signal with a distortion box. I'm assuming this is just a volume, right? Yep. But now it doesn't crackle. Thanks to Deoxit, the hero of the show. So what do you guys think? It's an interesting guitar. There's a lot going on here that I'm not used to. I kind of wish I had figured out how to adjust the tension of this bridge. It's fun to look at. I'm, I'm just not bonding with it. It's not fluttery. It's really clunky. Um, I like that it top loads like that. That's neat. I don't like that the guts are buried underneath the pick guard. If the adjustment needs to happen under the pick guard, underneath the pickups, there's four pickups in here. There's a, there's a ghost pickup right there. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that the design is not great if that's what needs to happen to adjust the tension on the trim. But it's a, this is a very divey trim. Like this is a trim made for the era, for 1983 to 85, 86, something like that. Those divey, divey, divey hair metal trims of the era. But what do you guys think? Are you compelled to shop for these things? They're on reverb. You can buy them used. Obviously you can't buy them new anymore, but they come in a bunch of different finishes. It seems like this one is a fairly rare finish. Which finish do you prefer? Tell me down in the comment section. Are you curious about these? Tell me in the comment section. I want to know what you think. You were going to do it anyways, right? All right. Thanks for watching. Huge thanks to my friend for loaning this to me uh, so that I could make content with it and get it set up for them so they can play it again. <laughs> I hope they play it. I hope now that I've done the work, they play this guitar. All right. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt if you're naked and stay grounded. Bye, everybody.